best way to put it would be that I'm a huge car guy. And uh, my friend Bill Gould, who's a fantastic designer out of California, is also a huge car guy. One day he was showing me some of his portfolio and I happened across this Miller 91 car on his website. I didn't realize that it was something he actually drew in 3D CAD. It was quite, quite an amazing feat, really. And I just knew immediately that I had to build this. When we set out to build this car, we wanted to highlight the four major technologies in 3D printing. That is FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling, SLS, which is Selective Laser Sintering, SLA, which is the original invented 3D printing process, stereolithography, and Polyjet. With the FDM process, it works like a hot glue gun extruding a hair-thin strand of plastic. It's a computer-controlled head that draws the perimeter of an object and then raster fills it layer by layer. In the case of this model car, when we did the frame, we actually built it in 13 thousandths of an inch layers. That enabled us to build it quickly, but also still maintain the strength and durability of ABS plastic. The polyjet process utilizes inkjet-like heads and it jets out an acrylic photopolymer that has UV bulbs on either side of the head. As it jets it out, the lights are actually curing it into a solid. letters we did in Polyjet because we used one of the elastomer materials called Tango Gray. That allowed us to actually press fit the letters into the tire. The SLS process is a powder-based process which uses powdered nylon which has the consistency of baby powder. What we do is we inert a large chamber with nitrogen and a 70 watt CO2 laser imprints the image of each layer into the powder by melting it. The SLA process 
is the oldest 3D printing process. It was created about 30 years ago, and it utilizes a 200 milliwatt laser, which is curing UV sensitive resin inside of a vat. When we chose to do the spoked wheels, we also used SLA and we chose that because of the surface finish of the model right out of the machine was good enough that we could just lightly sand it and spray it with the final color. The head of our model shop, Sue, uh, did most of the pattern finishing. And pattern finishing is where you take a raw 3D printed model and you sand it, uh, you sometimes bondo fill it, or you'll use a sandable primer to fill up the layer lines or reduce the layer lines and then get it prepared for either paint, plating, or vacuum metalizing. It was really cool to finally see all the parts in one place and the day that we did the final assembly was the very first time that all those pieces were in one place because we utilized four different processes and we had to send parts out to be chrome plated and vacuum metalized and so when we finally got them all put together in that one room that's when it hit me that when this thing goes together it's going to be really impressive.
What's so amazing about 3D printing, especially uh, for doing a model like this, is it makes you realize that anything can physically be 3D printed. And this model is just one very small example of how great this technology is and some of the great things that can come out of it. Once we actually got to the trade show, the very first one that we presented it at, when people come and see it for the first time, they immediately say, well, what on this was 3D printed? And we said, no, 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 the entire model was 3D printed. And usually people have a hard time accepting that. To be able to 3D print this entire model and have it look like a real car, it was just amazing to me. This was a great project that we got to work on, and I really want to thank Bill Gould with GouldStudios.com, Repoform, uh, and VacuCode out of Michigan for helping us out. But mostly, I want to I want to thank all my employees and and the Build Parts team for really pulling through on this. And, and this model turned out fantastic. I mean, I couldn't be prouder, and I can't wait to see what we build next. <laughs>